Hey guys, EBP Man here, and in today's video, we're gonna review a creator's dream machine. A machine that is a 3D printer, laser engraver and cutter, as well as a CNC machine, allowing you to express your ideas like never before. This is the Snapmaker 2.0. Now this video is part of a three-part series of videos that will cover each of the creative features of the Snapmaker 2.0. Now today, we're gonna to take a look at and focus on the 3D printing side of the Snapmaker and reviewing all the specs. Now the Snapmaker 2.0 features a quad-core A7 CPU at 1.1 gigahertz, and it's running Android OS with all its features accessible from a touchscreen. Now it also features power loss recovery, which enables Snapmaker to restart a job if there is a power outage. Now this is incredibly important. You could be into a print two or 20 hours, sometimes even 100 hours, and imagine losing power and all that time gone. Not to worry with the Snapmaker 2.0. Now from a 3D printing perspective, the build area of this printer is 320 by 350 by 330 millimeters. Now, the Snapmaker is going to provide you plenty of space to have some really large prints. So if you think about some of the helmets that you've seen on the channel, the face masks, a lot of the cool stuff that you're printing, or any other large item, you should be able to handle it on the Snapmaker 2.0. Now the printer also has a standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which is going to be suitable for a wide variety of materials. You're talking about PLA, ABS, TPU, wood-filled PLA as well as many other materials. It also has a filament detection solution that will pause your print even when you're running out of filament so that you don't lose that time. Again, going back to having a print, being away from the printer, and then it running out of filament, 10, 20, or 100 hours in is a critical failure. You don't have to worry with the Snapmaker 2.0. Now this printer also features a heated bed with a flex plate that's gonna make it really easy for you to remove prints. And one of the things that I love the most about this printer is the fact that it's self-leveling. And if you've had a printer, I have four printers in my home, one of the most difficult things about maintaining a printer is keeping that bed level. It's critical to get that very first layer right. And with the Snapmaker 2.0, it's auto leveling feature, it really makes this a breeze. Now, one of the cool things about this printer is that there's a variety of ways that you can upload prints to the printer. One of those is using USB and the other is using Wi-Fi. So you don't have to touch the printer, you can actually send it from your laptop or your desktop or from a USB stick. Now, Snapmaker also includes their own multifunction software that supports all of the printing solutions that you can have through this printer. So you have the same solution that's gonna work for laser printing, for 3D printing, and also CNC carving. Now this printer's construction is rock solid, but it's a bit louder than some of the other printers I reviewed. So as you're using this printer, make sure you're putting it in a place where the noise won't bother you. Now, some of it is white noise, but when it starts printing, when it starts carving, or when it starts using the laser, it will get a little louder. So placement is gonna be critical. Now, I've been running prints now for several weeks, and I wanna share with you what I've learned. These are gonna be some tips and tricks as part of this review, so that when you get this printer, you're actually up and running and having the best possible experience. Now, one of the things that I would highlight about my experience with the Snapmaker 2.0 that sets it apart is the fact that it worked right out of the box. And I have, again, a number of printers, both filament printers as well as resin printers, that have required tweaking, calibration, and it's taking quite a long time to get them running. This printer, as soon as I put it together and I set my first print benchy, it worked like a charm. Now, keep in mind, there's additional tweaking that could be done to improve the prints, but this thing worked as soon as I put it together. Now, it took me around 30 minutes to put this printer together, and one of the things that I highly recommend is that you also watch, while you're building your printer, the Snapmaker build process. Now, I have the 8350, the A350 version of this printer, which is the larger size. Now, there's two other sizes that you can actually uh, purchase that are gonna be having smaller build plates, and each of these have a video that you can watch so that you can build this quickly and without any problems. Now, I have several recommendations that you should consider to get the best printing experience. First, check out the Snapmaker community. There's a lot to learn there. And there's several print accessories that you will want to print as soon as you get your printer that are gonna enhance your overall experience. One of the things that I highly recommend is that you print the filament guide. You'll notice that on my printer here, I have a filament guide that I printed out and that's gonna help your filament uh, pretty much stay tangle free. I did notice that as I was printing it without the filament guide, it tended to wrap around uh, one of the main columns. So by putting this guide in place, I eliminated that completely. Now the second thing that I would print is an accessory holder. You're gonna see that I have an accessory holder right on the bottom of the printer. And this has all of the things that I would need that I use frequently. My cutters, my spatula, everything would fit in there. Um, some additional screws, uh, things that you wanna keep easily accessible that tuck away nicely right under the printer. And again, these are all available in the community. 
Now, one other item that I would recommend that you purchase is the optional enclosure from Snapmaker. Now, there are three reasons why I would recommend it. First of all, it's going to reduce the noise. This machine does have white noise as well as it does make noise when it's printing. And depending on your situation and where you can put it, you may want to have something that's going to deaden the noise. Having that enclosure is going to reduce your noise. The other thing is temperature. To get the best print, you have to have a balanced temperature. So for example, if you put this in a basement and you have a drafty basement, it's going to impact your prints. It's going to impact how well things stick to your build plate. So having this enclosure, it's going to regulate the temperature and it's going to give you the best printer experience. I actually know friends that have the Snapmaker 2.0 that have had an improved build experience simply by putting the case on the printer. Now, the last reason why you should consider having an enclosure is for laser printing and CNC work. Now, during the laser process, you are burning uh, leather. It could be, let's say, acrylic material. It could be metal, right? Whatever you're going to be engraving. And having an enclosure is going to deal with any kind of gases or fuming that comes from that burn. Now, the other thing is from a CNC perspective, you could greatly reduce the amount of dust that you can create as you're cutting wood. There's also some other print accessories that I would highly recommend, like there is an attachment that you can print that would uh, allow you to connect like a shot back to it, but that's going to make a lot of noise too. So having this case is going to A, reduce your noise, give you better print quality, and also it's going to reduce any kind of fume or dust that the unit will create when you're doing your creations. Now, one of the things that this printer does lack and was a little disappointing for me is that the print head does not have any kind of LED light. So as I am inspecting the first print, and I typically do watch my prints the very first layer to make sure that it has the best first layer, uh, it doesn't really have a, uh, a light or an LED. So I found myself using either my phone light or just um, highlighting with a flashlight just to make sure I got the best first layer. So I wish it had that. The other thing that I've noticed is that I've had to reboot the printer. Now, I run printers uh, almost 24-7, so I have these things running continually. And what I've noticed is that at times, uh, I notice that the printer may not have been as responsive as I'd like it to be as I'm loading prints or just navigating the interface, so I've had to reboot the printer. Now, again, I'm probably one of the heaviest users, unless you're a heavy creator, where you're running this thing for maybe 75 to 100 hours nonstop. So rebooting the printer was something that I also noticed. Now, the other thing that that I wish is that it had better cable management. So as you look at this printer, it is a clean build. I love the look. There's there isn't really any, um, I would say, banding or cables or anything on the outside on any of the points where this machine is operating. Uh, but it does have, if you notice here on the side, kind of, uh, I would say a mess, somewhat of a mess on the side. I wish it was a little bit cleaner where all these cables that are here on the side were a little bit better tucked away. Now I'm sure that there are things that you can print that could make them look a little bit better and maybe I'm being a little bit picky because of the aesthetics, but you know, when you look at the rest of the printer, it looks so clean and then you have these cables all hanging on the side that I wish I could clean and make them look as good as the rest of the printer. Now from a laser perspective, you're looking at a 1600 milliwatt 450 nanometer laser diode, which falls into a class four safety class. Now this laser is gonna be powerful enough to etch materials like wood, leather, plastic, um, fabric, paper, and also non-transparent acrylic. So you're gonna have a fantastic time creating with this laser. Now on the CNC side, the CNC drill bit fits into a 0.5 to 6.35 millimeter shank, which offers anywhere from 6,000 to 12,000 RPM. Like the rest of the machine, this thing is exceptionally built and it has good specs. And not only this, but you'll be able to, let's say, carve a wide variety of materials, including wood, acrylic, carbon fiber sheets, jade, and you know, it's literally limitless the kind of creation that you can do with this device. Now, the next thing I want to share with you is what my print experience has been with this printer. Now, keep in mind, no settings changed, uh, no configuration, standard profile settings, right? They didn't do any tweaking at all. And this is what I'm getting out of this printer. So take a look at this right here. So again, this is the first print. And typically, as a 3D printer, you ask anyone who's into 3D printing, they'll say, you know, one of the staple prints is going to be a Benchy. So the Benchy is kind of how you determine what the quality is, the initial quality. And there's all other things that you can print, like an XY cube, uh, overhang test, but this is our first. Take a look at the quality here. So I have a little defect here that I'm sure I can clean up, uh, you know, with, with some tweaking. But look at overall layer lines. And this is the fast setting. This isn't the detailed setting, right? This is the fastest setting. Really, really great for a first print. Notice the top, how clean that looks right there. Put that around at an angle. 
everything looks really good. And then also look at the arches. The arches are really nice and clean and there are no supports printed whatsoever with this, right? Everything is in great condition for an initial print. And I would say that for a, um, a novice or for someone who is just looking to get into 3D printing, this is good enough for you to run a lot of other prints. Um, you may want to tweak it once you get more experience, but this is definitely nice. Now take a look at the bottom here. And this is where I was like, wow, when I started seeing this print, I go like, this is precise. Cause look at how clean these letters here are here in the bottom. I have other benches that I printed on other printers where this is completely wiped. You know, you can't see the kind of detail here. Now, the other thing I printed is I printed uh, this statue and uh, and this is, uh, I, I forget the scale on this, but this is actually, we have it um, in our kitchen uh, next to uh, some of our wine. It's almost like a bookend. And this took a little bit um, over a day to print, right? So it was, you know, close to 24 hours. And again, take a look at this detail again. Being able, and what I find is so amazing about these uh, these printers, is that you're able to bring history to your home. Um, this is a free print that is available for download, and I still have some stuff that I need to clean up because I just uh, removed the supports uh, just to show you what things look like. Now, again, beautiful, beautiful print with some really, really great detail. Now, I also wanted to print some fun stuff, you know, with uh, all of the... Uh, reoccurring, I would say, or re-emerging, I would say, um, genres that are starting to come out on TV. And you know what? There's always going to be someone who's printing something from Star Wars. So check it out. Ahsoka. This is an Ahsoka print. Um, again, and this is a, this is standard, right? So this isn't something, I didn't do something that is a fine detailed print, but I just wanted to go with the normal, with the normal prints. Now I do notice that there's little defects here. So you'll notice right here, right here, there's a little defect and over here there's a defect, but overall the actual quality of this print, again, for no tweaking at all, you can see that right here, there's some, some patching that could be taking place. Um, I did use supports on this print, right? On um, this bust. You'll notice over here, I do have some areas that I can clean up. But all in all, again, with no tweaking, just using out of the box profiles, and you notice that it has like a little stand here, and you can notice how clean the bottom is, right? So this came out really nicely. As soon as I ripped it off, it came off the bed because of the, flex, uh, the flexible plate. Um, it's great, it's literally ready. It's really ready for some slight patching and then some painting. So this is gonna give you, again, a lot of, uh, I would say, creative outlet when it comes to creating uh, things like this. Now I have other things that I'm printing that I'll also share, but my initial, uh, I would say experience with print is pretty darn good. Now here's the ultimate question. Is this printer a buy? This is definitely a buy for me. So guys, that wraps up our Snapmaker review of the 3D printing capabilities of the Snapmaker 2.0.